issued to the learned counsel for all the parties and that certificate if presented before the high court or even before the supreme court the cases in the supreme court and the high court will be adjourned but the trial will not be adjourned so this is a fundamental shift in emphasis that the emphasis has to be on the trial of cases not on the appellate stages all those appeals and revisions and petitions they are a byproduct of that trial so the trial must take place and at its scheduled time the second in this very second step we have taken another precaution that maybe on the appointed date the learned counsel falls sick or there is some other unavoidable commitment that he has to make some family commitment or some other unforeseen foreseen reason he cannot appear so right on the day of scheduling we also get a list of his juniors from him that in case he is not uh, in a position to appear then his juniors or his his associates will appear the third step in this is that even if the learned counsel cannot make it even if his associate cannot make it a counsel on the defense list will be provided to the uh, accused on day 1 so if two steps fail the third step the, the the defense counsel at the state expense has to be there prepared with the case in advance so every effort is made that uh, the case is not adjourned for for a fault on on the part of the counsel or in default of the counsel likewise the prosecutors have been warned in advance that once a case is scheduled a trial is scheduled to take place then the prosecutor general has to ensure that all his prosecutors appear on the appointed date and if god forbid for some unforeseen reason the prosecutor cannot appear there should be a substitute prosecutor already waiting uh, in the wings this is the second step our first is chalan then the scheduling the third step is which is a fundamental shift in our approach for the last about half a century somehow originally it used to be the responsibility of the state to produce witnesses who are to appear on behalf of the prosecution but somehow for the last many decades this thing was not given due importance by the state agencies and the complaint was to bring witnesses or who are to depose for the prosecution that was wrong the state case in a state case the state must take responsibility for the case so we have undertaken a fundamental shift in this and we have shifted the burden to where it was due we have required all state agencies to cooperate and to produce witnesses private witnesses as well as police witnesses are to be produced by the police and we are very grateful to all the inspectors general of the police that they have fully cooperated there are focal persons appointed everywhere and the a list of witnesses is provided to them and the police is making sure that the private witnesses as well as the police witnesses wherever posted in the province they are made to appear on the appointed date the second is the prison authorities the state as i said must take responsibility so the the vans which are to bring prisoners they should be in proper order if the vans break down will not spare the superintendent of jail will take action against him if he cannot bring him on an official vehicle he should send the accused on his private vehicle whatever be the uh, reason the accused must be presented before the trial court on that date so i would request the those in charge of the prisons that they must make arrangements with prison vans are in good working condition and their scheduling their timing is such that before the court hours begin the prisoner must be produced before the trial court at least in these model courts then the medical profession in every criminal case if it is about uh, hurt or murder a doctor is involved and doctors are sometimes posted out 
they go to different districts. So it should be the responsibility of the health department to produce the doctor before the trial court. And for that purpose, we have again established focal persons who are interacting with the health department. And the health department, I'm grateful to them that so far they have cooperated beautifully. And all those doctors have been produced before the model courts whenever they are required to testify. The next limb was the reports of the chemical examiner of the serologist of the forensic science agency or laboratory and even those authorities have been taken on board and they are fully cooperating with our, our in charge here and uh, they are producing reports in time and uh, whenever there is a default uh, I'm sure those defaults will be looked into by the authorities concerned. So when the case is scheduled to be heard, all the relevant reports must reach the court well in time. So these are different things which we have ensured that the state, number one, takes responsibility for the state case. Number two, because of the scheduling and because of other factors that we have attended to, there is no delay. So delay is being targeted and that is the approach and without any change of law, without any change of procedure, we have achieved the miracle that you have seen and uh, the heroes are sitting here and we salute them. There's no extra expense involved. You see all those commissions which were previously constituted to reform the judicial system, they recommended changes of laws, they recommended changes of procedure, but nothing worked because it's unfortunate that for the parliament, probably justice sector is not a priority. There are other bigger things for them to attend to. But justice sector is suffering because of lack of attention of the parliament. The law commission has already submitted about 70 reports to the parliament and the, to the law ministry for attending to different uh, parts of uh, laws which need attention, which need um, amendment or, or uh, uh, substitution by different provisions. But unfortunately, none of those reports have so far been taken up by the parliament for consideration. So I would say, I would request that as we have taken responsibility on our side, the parliament and the executive should also show uh, similar interest in the justice sector and so that the whole thing can be reformed and it starts delivering. I would also, speaking of legislature, I would say that there are certain laws which need to be revisited. I'll give you an example of the Court Fee Act. In every civil case, an issue has to be framed whether proper court fee has been affixed or not. For that, People have to run to the revenue officials, get documents, present them before the court, deposit court fee, then the other party objects, an issue is framed, evidence is led, and ultimately some decision is also to be rendered on that issue, which again is a subject matter of appeals and it goes on. A very simple solution exists. You fix the court fee as a general court fee for all kinds of suits. Fix it as one rupee or hundred rupees or thousand rupees, but there should be no issue on it. Fix the minimum court fee that you think is uh, reasonable, but it should not be left to a dispute. Just one liner act would do that for every civil case, maybe one thousand rupees, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever you think is reasonable, but fix the court fee and you save millions of man hour in the judicial system. The lawyers working on it, the judges working on it, the evidence being produced, judgments being written on it, appeals being filed, it consumes millions of man hours in a year. So you can reduce those hours by just substituting this act through a one-liner that for every civil suit, this will be the court fee. That's the end of it. Second law which needs your attention is Succession Act. 
if we have two uh, sorry if we have 220 million people living in this country today vice crore then at least 10 crores will have some movable property like somebody may have a bicycle somebody else may have a hundred rupee bank account somebody else may have a sewing machine these are all movable articles which have to be inherited for every inheritance when 22 crore people all of us are to die one day then our heirs will have to go to a court to get a certificate so if half of this population will have to go to the courts one day that means that we are already ensuring with thus gyara crore dawe 3,000 judges, magistrates all over the country, and we are ensuring 10 crore dawas already. Is it reasonable? It's not. Why does everybody have to go to court for this? Courts are a part of dispute resolution mechanism. Whenever there is a dispute between the parties, in 95% of the inheritance cases, there is no dispute. The parties know who the heirs are and what are the shares of the heirs. Why do we have to go to court for that? So what I would suggest is that now that you have a national uh, data registration authority, NADRA, you can give a four month period to the population that you can get your family trees completed by NADRA. Everybody can just go and check and have his family tree incorporated in the NADRA record. And whenever you need a succession certificate, you go to Nadra with a click button on a computer, you can get your succession certificate. <laughs> it's only those one or two or five percent of the cases where there's a dispute. Yes, courts are there to solve disputes. They are not do a, they're not there to do a clerical job, which can be done by anybody else. So you are ensuring ten crores of civil suits on this judicial system which is already under great pressure in, of numbers. So this is the second law which I would say the government, the parliament need to attend to so that our burden is lessened. The third is the preemption act. Do we need preemption act? I think it was a thing of the past. Centuries ago, tribal people, they never wanted anybody, any outsider to come and live in their tribe or live in their territory. I think it, that law is no longer, it should, should no longer be a part of our uh, laws. Now there's a freedom of contract. Now there's a fundamental right to acquire property and to enjoy your property. Articles 23 and 24 of the Constitution. It's a fundamental right to acquire property. Now there's a sub-constitutional legislation which says no. If you acquire, somebody, will, somebody else will snatch it away from you. So before we look into these laws and test them on fundamental rights, I think it's for the legislature to attend to this. Is it really reasonable? Now we have multi-story buildings in the cities. One flat owner is suing another flat owner. And this is one source of blackmail, one source of uh, fleecing money from others. It is being misused. The legislature shall be well advised to, to look at this law, whether it, is, it has outlived its utility or not, and whether it conforms to fundamental rights or not. The other law which I would want the legislature to attend to would be the Illegal Dispossession Act. This was introduced in the year 2005. And if you ask me, what is this law? I would confess that I don't understand this law even today. <laughs> we have civil courts dealing with dispossession. We have criminal courts dealing with dispossession. There are penalties provided. There, everything is provided. Then suddenly this law comes which is neither civil nor, nor criminal. 
property disputes are being decided on the basis of reports of SHOs. The police reports now determine the rights of parties on, in civil matters. I, I don't understand this law. I constituted a seven-member bench in the Supreme Court to attend to this, to, to, to try to understand what does this law mean and where does it apply. And within half an half hour of arguments, all the learned counsel appearing before us, they just put their hands up, said, sir, we don't understand what this law is. So then we requested the learned attorney general to apprise the government about this, that uh, this law is again misused, uh, misused. Originally, there was not even a right of appeal provided. There is a ter term of imprisonment, punishment is provided, there is no right of appeal. Now they have provided a right of appeal only to one extent, not to the other extent. Again, there are issues, where should people go? Should they file a revision petition? Should they file a, a writ petition? Should they file a petition under section 561A? Where should they go? So far, there is no clarity. So please look into it and clarify the law that you have made before we do something about it. Then the Anti-Terrorism Act. Everything under the sun is terrorism in Pakistan, if you go by the definition given by the law. It could be the smallest of crimes, it could be the biggest of crimes. But if you look at the definition, everything is covered. It, uh, a simple theft, a robbery, a murder, a rape, any extortion, everything can be interpreted in a manner that it somehow fits into the definition of terrorism in the Anti-Terrorism Act. So we have now made an effort. We have constituted a seven-member bench in the Supreme Court. The judgment is reserved, so I can't say much about it. اسلام آباد میں چیف جسٹس آسف سعید خوصہ تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے ہیں ان کا کہنا ہے کہ پولیس کو مقدمے کی فوری تحقیقات کر کے چالان پیش کرنا چاہیے